Welcome Cancer to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of April for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm showing the event chart for the start of the week and you can see that your ruler, the Moon, is in the sign of Sagittarius. Now the sign of Sagittarius is a bit of a free spirit but for you this is house six. This is where you can get seriously practical. In fact, there's a great link between the Moon and Mercury in the part of your situation that's to do with career and how you connect to the wider world. There could be a link if you're going to have a conversation this week or start to rethink your interactions or the way you earn a living because Mercury goes retrograde later on on Monday. However, you can also see that Neptune, the planet of dreams, is in house nine. Now Neptune here has been brilliant for you since 2012 in terms of encouraging you to expand your horizons and it's possible that your life has changed enormously since then. Neptune has probably helped you to develop your consciousness and your worldview in quite a different way from before 2012. But at the start of this week, it's actually in a tough right angle with the moon for you. So the moon's pushing you to be more virtuous, apply to those practical strands, something actually that you don't usually have much uh, problem with, but Neptune's asking you to have a bit of escapism. So it could just mean that at points this week, uh, doing the things that really inspire you is much more alluring than the daily domestic routines. Totally understandable, of course. But you can see that you do have a big cluster of energy in house 10, including the Sun, North Node, Chiron, and critically Mercury, which goes into that retrograde. Now, Mercury retrogrades have an, a, a very big reputation. And if you are in a job at the moment, which you know, you're not particularly enjoying, you can take charge of things through the retrograde over the next 23 days and be proactive in perhaps retraining or learning some new skills or applying for jobs, adapting your curriculum vitae, reaching out to new potential employers, or if you work for yourself, developing some new and fresh services that may tempt in some new customers. So Mercury retrograde, of course, can create some glitches. It may be that you're waiting to hear back from uh, a potential employer and that information doesn't come as quickly as you would like. But I can tell you for sure, the next six months for you is going to be a giant time for your place in life. There's going to be some radical changes for you, for sure. But in House 9, which is very much about being independent, more adventurous, Mars joined last week. Mars is a very rugged influence and it is by the end of this week going to come into an alliance with Saturn. If you are discussing anything around the contract, particularly with Mercury retrograde, you could find yourself becoming frustrated if you feel someone's not being very fair. And that may feed in also to that uh, right angle between your ruler, the moon and Neptune, because something you're told at some point this week may turn out to be fabulously not true. It may be a complete mistake, but it's also possible that someone is being a bit artful and maybe in some ways trying to create an impression in order to gain something. So best to be quite shrewd about your interactions. Fortunately, Venus, the planet of money and love, is in a great link with the part of fortune at the start of this week, even if it is compromised a bit by the moon. And by Wednesday, Venus moves forwards and connects to Neptune. If you have been thinking about planning a vacation or actually going on holiday, if you did it around the heart of this week, it could turn out to be a stunning success. Because despite Mercury's retrograde and its reputation to dissuade us from moving around when it is uh, retracing its steps, for you, this combination can really help you to trip the light fantastic. So if you're going somewhere uh, that's really different, the cultural side of things, the artistic side of things, even the smells 
will all feed into your senses in a very vibrant way. If you're not traveling, uh, ninth house energy can be about learning things. Neptune spirituality and Venus about how we relate could be a connection around all those areas. So you could go to a lecture, an art gallery, uh, watch something on YouTube, which you really find is very, very powerful in a positive way. But by Friday, Venus moves to the top of your chart. An incredibly powerful location because Venus in Aries, which is a fire sign and ruled by Mars, Venus is technically debilitated here, but Venus is about desire. The 10th house is about ambition and Venus's ability to use charm and diplomacy in order to get what we want is emphasized even more by the connection to Pluto in the sign of Aquarius with Venus in Aries for the first time in over 200 years. And because Venus is in a very deep lying position, the eighth house, your psychological understanding and ability to read situations, but at the same time uh, work with people skillfully could render a great reward. It could happen almost straight away. Also, the sun meets the retreat in North Node, point of destiny. And if you have wanted to raise your profile, receive more recognition, move jobs, start that business that you've long hoped for with the sun approaching Chiron by the end of this week as well, which becomes exact on the eclipse on the following Monday, this is a giant time. If you have been involved in an extremely responsible position for a very, very long time, you may surprise people by relinquishing it, if not this week, but over this next half year. Also because Mars gets into a tussle with Saturn at the end of this week, there could be an argument, and that argument could be based over a difference of a point of view or difference in philosophies. Or maybe if you are moving around, you encounter someone, you know, the type of people that seem to get off on applying petty rules, which really could be very triggering. But try to keep mindful of the big picture. You're a cardinal sign. That means you're a sign of leadership. There's only four cardinal signs, Aries, you, Libra and Capricorn. And you're rather like Libra in a way that sometimes you need to be stirred up a little bit because you don't generally like confrontation, just like Libra doesn't. But because you are a leader sign, once something isn't working for you, you can apply a, an enormous amount of willpower, strength of character, determination, drive, passion, authority in order to change things in a way which works for you. So maybe all this Piscean energy in some ways is pushing you to liberate yourself from something that isn't really working, which takes us back to that square between your ruler, the moon, which is in your sector of responsibilities, and Neptune in your ninth house of freedom very close to Venus and the part of fortune. Mars applies to Saturn in the same area at the end of the week. So if you've done uh, a very good job for a very long time in an organization, but you no longer feel appreciated or valued, or it's no longer giving you a sense of satisfaction, that's why the next six months is gonna see some major shifts for you. But I want you to know that despite Mercury's retrograde, it's going to give you a chance to rethink things, recalibrate things and realign towards something which is right for you and where you can use your executive qualities, your management skills, your life skills in such a successful way. But I think it may be in a new environment and it can be a very exciting period of change, but it does mean change, which of course can be a little bit daunting. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Cancer. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great week. And if you've yet to do so, please like, comment, share or subscribe.